don't pretend they're taking a, a scientific harm reduction stance. By all means, have a moral stance. In a sense, they've taken that with, uh, with our, by, by keeping alcohol and tobacco out of the act. They've said they don't care. So, so that's, but just do not ask scientists to produce evidence to justify a moral stance so they can then say, this is science. It must be class B because it's lethal, when it isn't. The difficulty there is, of course, that uh, you've compared the dangers of ecstasy to horse riding. Yeah. Uh, so you see, uh, uh, what you say falls down a little uh, when you talk about hard scientific evidence with a, if I may say so, crass comment like that. Well, obviously you haven't read the paper, have you? But it's not a crass comment. That was a carefully considered analysis. Do you know how many people die every year from horse riding accidents in this country? So well, it's over 30. So how many people die of ecstasy? It's well, about 10. you're talking 10. about proportions now, aren't you? Uh, proportions of users? Oh, yes, if you read my paper, you'll see, particularly in eventing, so, so hard-end horse riding, there's a serious accident every 35 hours, uh, and ecstasy, it's about a serious event every 350,000 hours. So, look, you know, I, this is the part of the issue. Here you are trying to argue the science. You're not a scientist. We've done the analysis. We've looked at it. If you don't like what we say about the science, well, say, OK, we, we'll, make, we'll take a moral position, but don't try to tell me that the science we've done is wrong. My committee had 28 people. We did the most detailed analysis of ecstasy, the most detailed analysis of cannabis ever done. We know what the harms are. But do you not see that the headlines that come out of the science that you describe, you're quite right, I haven't read your paper, but when you see a headline like that, that horse riding is more dangerous than ecstasy, that it does uh, make people think you're being glib about this? Well, all I can say is it's good to have the opportunity to explain to people who might think that through your medium that we're not being glib. We are saying that if you want to reduce harms and death, you should tell the truth about drugs and the harms of drugs, but also make reasonable comparisons. Frankly, you know, having done that research on, on horse riding, I'd be extremely concerned about my children riding horses, particularly eventing, because I know their likelihood of be being seriously injured is very high. And, in fact, since I published that article, I have had countless numbers of horse riders say, you're dead right, I've got a broken pelvis. In fact, one of my council members broke a pelvis during, the, during the, the review of ecstasy riding a horse. Horse riding is a very dangerous activity, like, like climbing mountains or, or bungee jumping. They're not trivial. You know, they're, they're, just because they're legal doesn't mean they're safe. Has the Home Secretary scored an own goal, do you think, tonight, oh, Professor absolutely. Nutt, by sacking you in this way and giving you the oxygen of the publicity that we're, well, we're now giving you? I don't want publicity for me. I want publicity for science, for truth. Uh, I think it's a bad day for science that, that government scientists, government advisers cannot share their genuine concerns about the misrepresentation of science in legislation. And if they do, they get sacked. And I, I think that's going to cast a big shadow over the, the scientific community in relation to government. It's going to make people very wary now about uh, working with government and giving scientific advice, because it, not only may it be ignored, but if, it, if they then speak up about the, it being ignored, they're going to be sacked. It's, it's a very sad day, I think. And it's uh, uh, I th the majority of emails and texts I've had since it's gone public, have been really supportive of me. Mo loads of people I, I don't know have obviously found out my address on the internet and have written letters of support. We heard of, I, I don't know if you've heard it, but there was a debate uh, in, the, in uh, the BBC Question Time uh, programme. Um, any questions this evening? And they did a vote at Cambridge where the meeting was being held. Not a single person in the audience of Question Time or any questions supported the Home Secretary. They all supported me.